a 16-year-old girl who lived with her parents and two younger sisters went to bed in her room and was found dead the next morning. The cops knew right away that someone had been killed, but none of her family members heard anything that night. It took 31 years, but the case was finally solved, though no one was ready for this turn of events. Hi, and welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing as it helps us motivate to create more intriguing content for you. Let's have a look at the case of a girl who was found dead in her own bedroom. Fawn Cox was born in Kansas City, Missouri on March 24, 1973. Soon after, her parents had two more girls. The family lived in a rough area in a small house with two stories. She helped her folks take care of the younger kids when she was young, went to church often, and liked to swim. Fawn got a part-time job at a nearby entertainment park when she turned 16. Her family was pretty poor, so the girls tried to find ways to make money when they weren't in school. She worked during most of her 1989 summer break. Most of the time, the girls sold tickets to rides from behind the cash register. Wednesday, July 26, around 10 p.m., she finished her job. Public transportation took a long time to get her from the park to her house, so her mother and younger sister picked her up in the car. Fawn went to bed almost as soon as she got home because she had to work again the next morning. The girls slept in her own room on the second floor. Her sisters usually slept in the next room, but that night she was all alone on the floor. That night, her sister Amber, who was only a year younger, was watching children for a family they knew. Felicia, the other sister, chose to sleep on the first floor where it was much cooler. It was a very hot night, and the only working air conditioner was downstairs. On the first floor, their parents also slept. The next morning, around 9 a.m., Fawn's alarm clock rang, waking up the whole family. The girl wouldn't turn it off, though, for some reason. Then her younger sister and mother went upstairs to her room, where they saw something terrible. Fawn was dead on the bed, and her neck was swollen and red. The girl also didn't have a pulse. Her parents called an ambulance right away, but by then, it was too late. It was obvious that Fawn had died hours ago. After looking at her body, Doctors found that she had been strangled to death. They also found that she had been abused from the moment she was born. The cops knew that their investigation was going to be very hard. Even though Fawn was killed in her room, in a house with bad insulation, her parents and sister didn't hear a thing. But there was a reason. The air conditioner on the first floor was very old and very loud, which made it hard to hear anything else in the house. Fawn's sister was the only one to notice anything strange that night. Even though their dog was acting nervous and barking, they didn't pay it much mind. People thought that this was because the dog was pregnant. The cops found several important things when they looked at the scene. They thought that the person or people who broke in got in through a window on the second floor that looked out onto the backyard. There was an old trailer stopped near the house that could be easily used to climb up to the outbuilding's roof, which was almost at the same level as the window. The window had been left open because the second floor didn't have air conditioning and people had to find a way to deal with the heat. The first important signs were found in Fawn's room. There were a few short hairs, small blood stains, and traces of semen on her bed. Everything was sent to the lab to be looked at. A few things were also missing from the house, like radios, a Nintendo game system, and a stereo recorder. Several other things were found on the ground in front of the house. It looked like the thief had thrown them out of the window to take them with him, but left them there for some reason. Detectives also found that things had been taken out of a closet in a second-floor room next door. They thought the person who did it was hiding in that closet until everyone went to sleep. That room was usually where Fawn's sister slept, but not that night. 
Because of this, no one saw the things on show. The cops found another strange clue when they found an old army cap in Fawn's room. All of the girl's family members said they had never seen her wear it, so police thought that the killer might have forgotten to bring the cap to the crime scene. Even though there was a lot of proof, the police couldn't find the suspects quickly. The trouble is that DNA forensics was not very well developed in 1989, and there were no common genetic databases. The main story of what happened came from Detective Benjamin Caldwell, who was in charge of the case. He thought there could have been more than one attacker, and they must have been familiar with the house. They not only knew how to get to the second floor through the dark garden, but they must have also known how the rooms were set up. The next thing the cops did was look for people who saw what happened. They talked to Fawn's neighbors, friends, and family members, but none of the interviewers led to a clear answer. The police had a big problem to deal with. The area where the house was was very poor, and there were a lot of criminal gangs there. Their members were hard to catch and bring to justice. The case finally got started a month after Fawn was killed. A witness told the cops who they should look for. This witness knew some important facts that the cops were never told. So this story was taken seriously. Three teens were being looked into, and one of them was in Fawn's class. They were taken into custody and asked questions, but the boys said they had nothing to do with the killing. When the cops searched one of their homes, they found things that had been taken from the victim's room. All three of them were charged with murder because of this. Even here, though, the agents were let down. First, the witness changed his mind all of a sudden and stopped helping the cops. Second, the blood and hair that were found at the crime scene did not match the suspect's DNA samples in a clear way. In those years, experts still couldn't find a perfect match between the samples, and all of their tests gave results that were hard to trust. In other words, the results couldn't prove either that there was a full match or that there was an assured mismatch. Even so, the cops were able to learn something useful from one of the people they were holding. During one of the questions, he admitted that he and some other boys had broken into Fawn's house that night and taken some things. He heard about how he used the roof to get into the second floor and even told some unknown facts. He said that the tape recorder's handle broke when he threw it out the window. The boy put it under a bush nearby, and that's where the cops found it. But the young man quickly took back what he said and stopped helping with the investigation, so his confession could not have been used in court. So the cops had to let him go, and the investigation again came to a halt. Most likely, the witnesses were scared but the case had almost no chance without their evidence in court. We only know that one of them went to jail for eight months because they stole things from Fawn's house. Since then, the case has been put in a long box. The cops didn't look into the case again until the early 2000s. The first thing they did was upload DNA samples from the crime scene to the CODIS database. It was made a few years ago, and it had DNA samples from people who had been tried for major crimes. No matches were found for the fawn killer, which is bad news. Scientists have made significant advancements in DNA research, leading to the creation of a database. The police obtained DNA samples from the original suspects in a murder case, but the tests proved that the evidence did not match any of them. Detectives speculated that a fourth person was involved in the crime, leading to further confusion. In 2018, Fawn's sister, Amber, shared new information on an online forum for unsolved crimes, hoping to find answers. Despite the attention garnered and fundraising efforts by the family, the police were reluctant to reopen the case due to limited resources. Eventually, Parabon Nanolabs analyzed the DNA samples and identified Fawn's cousin, Donald Cox, as the source of the DNA found at the crime scene. However, the case against the three original suspects could not be proven, and the investigation was closed. 
It was later discovered that one suspect's family found a stolen item belonging to Fawn, but couldn't prove their involvement. The family finally had closure, knowing the truth about the murderer, who had since passed away. Share your thoughts on the story in the comments. And if you liked the video, don't forget to click the like button. Thanks for watching.